we're talking the most overlooked pillar in style. It's, it's fragrance. I don't know why it is, but men generally don't spend as much time on figuring this out as they should. What I'm here to do today, I'm gonna make the case that you do need to spend time and that you need to figure out what your signature scent is. I'm gonna help. But before I get into that, I think this warrants a quick history on how I got into fragrances. It was circa 1995, I was a little guy, and yeah, yeah, this was around the time I made my famous local jewelry commercial. Room and help mom do the dishes. So here's a list of some of the stuff I want. Could you bring something neat for mom too? She likes pretty things like a bracelet or maybe a necklace that's real shiny. Thanks, Santa. Oh, you thought, oh, you thought, Oh, you thought YouTube was my first foray into stardom? No. No, I've been in the star game a long time. Long time. Circa 1995, Christmas, and my sweet uncle gifts me a bottle of cologne. But it's not any bottle of cologne. This cologne is called English Leather. And as you can imagine, English Leather on an eight-year-old doesn't really fit. It's a little old for an eight-year-old. In fact, I would say English leather is too old for my 88-year-old grandpa. You start wearing English leather about 10 days out from kicking the bucket. That's when you do your first splash. It's kind of like a signal. It's like, I'm going. So needless to say, I didn't wear it, but I did appreciate it because it smelled, well, super leathery, that was interesting to me. But it was really my mom, a very classy lady, who got me into this stuff. Her home has always smelled amazing, she smells great, and she has always worn the same fragrance, what we now call a signature fragrance. And she was the one who explained why she wears a single fragrance. She said that she wanted people to get acquainted with it, at her office. She wanted it so that whenever she was walking through the office, you leave a trail behind you, a scent. She wanted people to know that Debbie was there. I just thought that was super considered and cool. And so I started thinking more about it. But it wasn't until about three years ago that I went deep into the rabbit hole. So what I found was it really comes down to two things in choosing your signature fragrance. Your style and your personality. Let's use some examples here. So, if you are a conservative dresser, you're a quiet person, you have a calm presence, quiet confidence, then Tom Ford's Tuscan Leather is not gonna be for you. Tuscan Leather is a brilliant fragrance. This is intoxicating, but it is polarizing. It is bold. It is commanding. This is, you ever seen the, the image of that super jacked kangaroo? Tuscan Leather. It's basically three things. It's raspberry, leather, and ash. Imagine, you're at the farmer's market in your Rolls Royce and you buy every raspberry there, because you got a Rolls. You stuff your Rolls Royce full of raspberries and you're driving off and you're just chain smoking. That's Tuscan leather. Don't get me wrong, I joke. This truly is incredible. I can't wear it. It doesn't fit my personality. I have it because I just appreciate it and I just like to smell it, but it doesn't go with me. But I appreciate it on others. Okay, let's go to the other side. Say you are that calm, quiet, 
conservative dresser. What's something a little more fitting? Tom Ford's Oud Wood. This is another brilliant scent. It's woody, it's spicy, it's clean, it's classy. This will not offend anyone like this one will. It's not polarizing. This is a crowd pleaser. But I also don't really wear this much because it also doesn't really fit with my personality. This is too nice. And that's not me. <laughs> this isn't gonna ruffle any feathers. This is, everyone, everyone's gonna like this scent. Everyone's gonna like it. And that is to say, they should. It's a brilliant scent. It smells fantastic. But it's easy. It's nice. That ain't me. So what was the one? Well, you already know. Santal 33 by La Labo. I didn't want to like this. I really didn't. Because it had so much hype behind it. There were articles written, famous person wears it, famous person wears it. I didn't want to smell like everyone else. So I ordered a sample expecting to love it. It came in, I sprayed it on paper. That was my first mistake. If you're testing out fragrance, you have to smell it on your skin to see how it reacts with you and to see how it actually develops. All I got from spraying it on paper was one scent and it was dill. That's all I got. I was confused, didn't know why anyone liked it. I thought everyone was crazy. A year goes by, me hating Santal 33. I find myself in New York City Hop into a Lolabo store, I'm spraying things, and I thought I'd give it another shot. I sprayed it on my skin. Fireworks, man. I got it. It was everything I was searching for. It was earthy, it was woody, it was green, it was complex. It was high-low. It was both classy, but also grassroots at the same time. High-low is what I'm always shooting for. If I'm wearing a suit, I'm usually intentionally a bit sloppy with my tie. If I'm wearing a suit, you might catch me with a yard beer. Like, I like anchoring with my grassroots. I'm a Midwestern boy, man. We're fishing on Saturday. So this to me is, I know the city. I like nice things, but I'd rather be dirty outside in the garden going fishing, going hiking. It's high-low. I love it. All right, y'all, that's it for this one. I want you guys to do me a favor. Drop in the comments below what's your go-to fragrance. I wanna know. Thanks, y'all, for watching. I'll see y'all in the next one.